do you know that uh, black cotton soil expands uh, when wet and uh, contracts when dry? Do you also know that uh, steel uh, has very good uh, tensile strength, but very poor uh, uh, comprehensive strength? Well, concrete is the opposite. Concrete has very excellent compressive strength, but very poor in tensile strength. So basically what I'm saying is that uh, steel, uh, if, you, uh, if you pull it, it has very good strength, but when you compress it, when you like put it together and apply force on them, they give in. While concrete is the opposite, that is concrete, when you pull it away, you just cut. It doesn't have any strength. It can't resist, you know, those forces of that wants to pull it apart. But when you like pull it and try to compress it, then it resists. It's strong. So steel and concrete put together, uh, they complement each other. Where steel is weak, concrete is good. Where concrete is weak, steel is good. I want you now to hold on to those three points we said about the, the characteristic of uh, black cotton soil and the characteristic of steel and the character, characteristic of uh, uh, concrete. Uh, welcome to Gen Z today. Uh, my name is uh, Orio Victor. Uh, today's topic is uh, how to build uh, your house uh, in a black cotton soil area. Uh, welcome. Uh, we know that, uh, and we've had so many cases, uh, people who live in black cotton soil areas, they always have issues with the um, cracks on the, on the slab and cracks on the walls. Uh, how do we solve this uh, issue of cracks uh, in the foundation? And uh, guys, you have to listen very carefully to this because it's something that uh, we've tried it and uh, uh, we tested it and it's working and basically it's just based on the fact that steel is good intentional forces and bad uh, in compression forces while the concrete is the opposite so what do you do basically just introduce a ground beam on the entire uh, wall uh, part of the house you know normally where you put the foundation wall just put the ground beam and how do you go about it in our case, mostly because we deal with uh, small uh, small structures, uh, although we've also done classes and we've also done even ho hostels for, for, for students, normally what you do, we basically just, uh, 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 we, we design or uh, introduce uh, six D12 uh, reinforcement bars, yeah? Then bind them with a, a D8, a ring of D8, 200 millimeter center to center. So basically, you have a like a rectangle center. So basically, you have a like a rectangle, a triangle, a rectangular, a rectangular shape uh, mesh steel structure that has two bars of D12 uh, at the top, two bars D12 in the middle, and two bars uh, D12 at the bottom. Then you ring them up uh, with, a, with a D8 at 200 millimeter center to center. So basically, of course, you'll have done the setting of your house. You'll have established the walls of your house. Then what you do, you just excavate, uh, you know, a, a width of about, um, you can do 600 millimeter, the normal one. But now you don't go very deep down. You can just go a foot. Because remember, cotton soil, especially in those areas that have serious and concrete black cotton soil no matter how deep you go you won't get the firm ground and may not have any impact on on on, on the, the structure that you want to build and more so most of those people who are in those black cotton soil areas you find that uh they, they're also on flat ground areas like you find in 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 in, 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 in kano kano plains in kisumu it's basically like the name says a plain surface it's flat surface 
So even as you are doing the, uh, the foundation, remember, bring the house up. In fact, I always wonder why people still do uh, houses almost at the ground level in areas like Ahero, Nyakach, and those areas. Yet they are prone to they are prone to flash floods, and there's a lot of you know flooding of waters water annually. So, my friend, uh, raise your house, raise the flow of your house, and this method that I'm that I'm talking about will help you to raise the level of your house from the ground because you have your your your, your concrete that is uh, you know your concrete that is 600 by by 200 you say you you just excavate about a foot from the ground level so that you maybe you take care of vegetable soil the loose structure and stuff then you can backfill uh, you know the base with with hardcore or maram then just do a light blinding it's a light it's a light concrete on it so that when you place your, your you know your, your your steel structure it doesn't touch the ground then just come and do your 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 your, your formwork uh, the beam homework on it but remember at that level you are not going to concrete the entire 600 we are just interested in concreting um, 450 millimeters of that ground beam meaning by the time you are done you'll still have about one, uh, 150 millimeter or rather six inches that will still be protruding up this six, six inches still has the, the ring that are protruding and the two bars at the top there. Um, then what, what, what do you do? So after doing that, you have your entire foundation uh, concreted with a ground beam, the entire walling. So it means that any wall structure that you're going to build in that house is going to rest on a ground beam. Yeah, I hope up to that point uh, we are clear. So once you do that, you have your ground beam that has been concreted well. You've used the right mix. You can use uh, the one to four uh, ratio. Then vibrate it properly, you know. And if we assume you've done your setting, everything is correct. The walls, the shapes, square, level, everything is okay. Then excavate uh, 450 of the internal part of those walls. So, so you've done the wall, you've done the wall, uh, the, the ground beam now you concreted the 450 of it remember that we had also dug about we had gone down by about a foot but again you also did some backfilling dog so you may end up having maybe a foot or so of black cotton soil to remove remove the entire black cotton soil so that you remain with a void of 450 millimeters thick 450 millimeters that's one one and a half foot I hope up to there we are still uh, uh, we are clear. You know. Um, so once you do that, so you backfill the entire floor area. You can use hardcore, then maybe top it up with marrow. So already now you have a ground beam. You have a house that has been, you know, done with a ground beam. All the walls have, uh, have been concreted well. Then the 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 the, the filling inside. You've used the hardcore, good quality hardcore and maram. Then after that, go and get a compactor. There's this a small roller. Yeah. Come and let it, you know, once you've done your maram on it, let it roll, let it compact the ground for you. Let it compact the ground for you in a nice way so that you don't have uh, air pockets and lose um, you know, lose lose soil or lose stones that are there. Let it be a compact thing. Then you'll do the normal um you you you, you do the normal um uh, uh pesticide you put the one that is recommended after that then you can do your you can put your dpm the the, the polythene bag on, on top of the surface then uh after that of course the electrician the plumber they'll come and do their pipe work on it uh the plumber may May, may, may use it on the surface or may do his excavation for the pipes below the, the, the polythene. But basically, at this level, you've done that and you've put your BRC. Now, this is very important also for you to understand. BRC mesh 
we all know that we there's the mesh that normally we use in the foundation. But now, the mesh that I want you to use here that will work is the one that is called A142. It, it means that, uh, uh, I mean, and it's a roll of normally 2.1 meters by 48 meters long. You know, so you find that maybe a three bedroom house sometimes can, yes, you can maybe buy two or two and a half. I mean, unless it's very big, maybe you use three of those rolls. So you use uh, BRC A142. BRC A142 is a mesh of, 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 uh, of a six millimeter. Um, normally that, that mesh, you know, it's a mesh, so it's the box, the square and stuff. That one, the thickness of that mesh is normally six millimeters. Uh, it's like just a round bar. So that is the one that you use. You come and put it on top of your DPM nicely. Uh, you know, just peg it up the way you're supposed to put. Then after that, and you've done your pipe works and everything, so you are ready to concrete. Remember, we did a, 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 a ground beam of the concrete. We did we, the, the, concrete, the, the ground beam is supposed to be 600 uh, millimeter high, you know, but we did 450, so it means we still have 150 to concrete. So what happens basically once you've done your BRC, it means that the concrete slab that you're going to cast is going to be 150 millimeters thick. Normally, we like doing four millimeter. Uh, I mean, we, we like doing four inches or 100 millimeters uh, for a normal foundation for a normal slab. Most of the houses, uh, most of the houses just do uh, we just do the 100 millimeters or four inches. Of the concrete ground slab but in this case i highly advise and that is the one that will work you do the six inches thick so your concrete should be thick six inches thick that is 150 then concrete it well vibrate it well just do the normal standard things that are supposed to be done when you're doing your concrete uh if you do that and if you follow that i can guarantee you but you're not going to have any crack uh, either on the foundation, a walling, or even on your walls. Because sometimes when the crack starts from uh, down there, it goes up. Or even on the slab, you're not going to have any crack. I've said this is something that we've done. I'm sure when some of the clients are here and they are watching and they can, they can attest. We have institutions that we've done that for them. We have this individual clients also that we've done that for them. And it can work. And it's not guesswork. The whole thing still takes us back to uh, my initial um, uh, uh, introduction. And now you have a, a, a ground beam. You have a foundation that has been, uh, that, that, that comprises of concrete and steel. You know, it is 600 millimeters uh, high or rather thick. There is no way that the crack, the behavior of the soil, because we say the soil, uh, the black rock soil normally expands when wet and contracts when dry. So this movement of expansion and uh, expansion and contraction, this is the same movement that normally affects uh, the foundation in, 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 in black cotton soil areas. So when you have a, a foundation that doesn't have reinforcement bars, there is no wire mesh or rather BRC. You didn't include any um, uh, ground beam on it, or you didn't, you, you know, include the you know the, the reinforcement bars, the, the one that have been specified. You didn't include them in your foundation at the right place, because even if you do the the, the foundation strip with the, with the steel down there, <clears throat> but you still build using uh, the the the, the quarry stones, this movement of the soil. Expansion and contraction. Expansion shrinks. Now in a fura, in a, you know, it will still affect the wall because quarry stone doesn't have uh, the, 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 the strength to resist, uh, you know, tensional forces or even compressional forces. You know, not, not so much, uh, so to say. So when the soil expands, then that force is a way in which it comes and 
you know, penetrates in between the, the, the joints of the, of the stone and it cracks. And it goes up, it finds that also on your slab, you don't have any BRC or any mesh or any reinforcement. Then also it, in a pursuit too, then it cracks. So you find your wall is cracking from the floor going all the way up because you didn't include any uh, measures to resist the movement of black cotton soil of expansion and contraction. So when you do that, it means that there's no way your walls are going to, when you do, when you, when you introduce the ground beam and then work on your slab, the way I've said, there's no way you'll get cracks on the walls. All your walls are safe. Because there's no way, there's no way that the crack will pass through that beam. 2B12 at the bottom, 2B12 in the middle, and 2B12 at the top. With this concrete that has been vibrated, that is a solid uh, member. That's a teamwork that you cannot, that the movement of the black cotton soil cannot penetrate. Then when it comes to the slab, slab also remember, you've also done your back filling of about 450 millimeters of hardcore and you compacted it well. Even if there's movement be, be below it, it can't come all the way and, you know, and even if it comes, you still get that also still have your, your, your BRC mesh of A142. That's a mesh of six millimeters, uh, viewers. You are not going to have any crack in your house and you are going to be safe. You spend money on the foundation well, you'll never regret. Most of uh, developers, contractors, Okay, sometimes we'll, we'll, out of ignorance, or sometimes we just want to save, we'll take shortcuts, which eventually will cause the client or the homeowner a lot of emotional um, anguish and financial drain. Because I've spoken to so many of, of my friends, of my clients, uh, I mean, people who have been affected by, uh, you know, poor workmanship. Uh, in the foundation of their structure in these areas. So um, let's let's discuss more. Let's continue talking about the same. Um, and let us consult. Let us not just build. Me today, I've brought this information here for you. You, a con you is a contractor. You is an engineer. You is a, is a, is a, is a you know a, a player in the construction industry. You can research, you can add, you can improve on what we talked about, uh, so that at the end of the day, I mean, we, we do what we are paid for. If you are paid to build for somebody a house, build for somebody a house that's not going to crack, whether it's going to be raining or not, it's a cotton soil area or not. So viewers, that is our, our take home today. I hope it has now, um, sunk well in your head um, uh, what we are supposed to do in these areas let's continue listening to the gen z today uh, like subscribe to this channel for more of these uh, videos and thank you so much for being with us watch out for the next video until then bye